Hey everybody! Well today's video is all about the different formats of motion picture film from the most narrow gauge of 8mm all the way through to large format and some specialty formats as well. Stick around. I'm going to preface this video by stating for the record there have been a lot of motion picture film formats out there. So many. And if you just break it down to the formats that survived the format wars, there are still so many we will never ever hear about or talk about because they were so obscure. If you go through a little bit of history, um, you know, 90 millimeter, 65 millimeter, 19 millimeter, you know, 54 millimeter, 51 millimeter, there were so many unusual sizes and a lot of them revolved around the larger dimensions. And that's kind of where our 65 millimeter camera negative and 70 millimeter prints came from was some of these larger formats from the past. And so um, it's really interesting to note that only a couple of formats survived the format wars. And these are the formats that kind of survived. We are missing a couple because it's difficult to get samples of some of them. But these are the ones that we can get samples that we can show. And for the record, the reason why there is a piece of film strapped to my box here is because this is 9.5 millimeter and I do not want to unspool it or cut it. It's very rare, unusual, and I don't want to get near it. So we're going to show it here in the way we're showing it and just so you can get a little bit of a size comparison in the close-up shot. So let's talk about what we have here and why these formats are kind of the main formats. So we have, starting from right to left, we have eight millimeter, we have super eight millimeter, we have 9.5 millimeter, standard 16 millimeter with no soundtrack, 16 millimeter with soundtrack, super 16 millimeter, again with no soundtrack. We have three perf color negative. We have the Fox Cinemascope format with four track on it. We have standard four per 35 millimeter projection print. We have 70 millimeter projection print. We then at the top have um, six perforation Cinerama, and then we have 15 perforation IMAX. So these are kind of the main formats. The one major format missing from this is VistaVision, which is a horizontal 35 millimeter format. I don't have any of it available. Unfortunately, where it was widely used as a camera format, it was not widely used as a projection format. So finding a print of it is basically impossible. And the people who own those prints are not getting rid of them for cheap. So having a sample is nearly impossible unless it's negative. And of course, then, you know, you'd have to basically shoot something yourself to get a negative of it. So unfortunately, this division we don't have, but that's the one that's missing. And I want to make sure everybody knows that I know about it and that it is missing from this whole thing. So the first thing we're going to talk about in terms of history is the perforations, because the perforations are all kind of different, actually. Now, Everybody uses that word perf, right? So perf means perforation, and it generally means the, the, how large the image is between the perforation sprocket holes. So this roll of film, you can see that the, if you count the perforations, it's one, two, three, four, five perforations between every frame. So that's what we mean by perforations per frame or five perf. This is six perforations per frame. Cinerama, six perf. Um, the four per 35 millimeter formats. This is three perforations per frame camera negative. Um, and this is a format that was is today still very widely used to capture. It's not a projection format, it's a capture only format. And three perf allows you to get a 1.75 to one aspect ratio image out of your um, you know camera, which means when you mat it down to 185 or 240 aspect ratio, you're not only saving film because you're only using three perforations per height, but you still get the full width of the format. Okay, whereas in with four perforations, if you shoot four perf and you uh, make a print, you're missing all this area where the soundtrack is, which is several millimeters worth of information. It's not exactly a you know a little bit of space. It's it's quite a bit of space. Far more space than the 
uh, savings you have on standard 16 versus super 16, way more. So that's why we shoot three perf or even two perf to get that full width. Now they do make a format called super 35 millimeter for four perf, okay? Uses the full width. However, if you're going to then make a print of that, you're gonna lose that side, right? So you have to frame all the images to the right a little bit to, 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 to miss that side and that's kind of weird. So, um, so yeah, so that's why what we say perforation. Now, 16, um, 9.5, Super 8, 8 millimeter is only one perforation per frame. And on eight millimeter and super, it's right on the side of the picture. So the picture's here and the perforation's right here in the side. 9.5, it's between the frames below every frame. 16 millimeter, it's right in the side as well. So a lot of guys do what's called an underscan, which means that you're seeing more than just the frame on a film scan and you'll see that big perforation hole there. It's rare for people to do that with 35 millimeter, but people do it with 35 and you can do it with some scanners and see the perforations as well. And so um, that's what we mean by perf. Now with IMAX, it's 15 perf per, between frames. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 perforations prefer between frames. That is a large, large, large film format. IMAX is the largest commercially used film format. You may not notice it even in a close-up of each one of these frames, but there is some substantial difference between the perforations. You will see square perforations, rectangular perforations, you will see perforations with round edges and you'll see perforations with square edges. And so I want to talk about what the differences are between them and why they chose what they chose. With camera negative, you will see round edge perforations. Those are the original Bell and Howell perforations that were developed a long time ago. Don't know the date off the top of my head. We're talking like pre thirties, you know, in the twenties. When it came to projection, they found that format didn't really work very well. They found that projectors would jam and it would have all sorts of issues. So they changed the perforation to have square edges and that is the Kodak perforation type. And then on the CinemaScope uh, format, which is again, 35 millimeters, the format had a perforation type called Foxhole. And interestingly enough, after they created this and switched the projectors to this format, they never went back. So almost all projectors today have the CinemaScope format perforation or Foxhole perf. Now Super 8 is its own perforation as well. It's very similar to the Foxhole format we just talked about. And of course 9.5 is its own world as well with the perforation in the center of the film between the frames rather than on the edges. So now let's talk about the aspect ratios because of course that is where the formats kind of changed over the years. So with eight millimeter, super eight millimeter, 9.5, um, stick standard 16 millimeter and four per 35 millimeter, which includes the CinemaScope format, you are basically running at about a one, three, three to one ASIC ratio. It's square. And it's funny they chose the square format because it wasn't always the case. The square formats were what was decided based on still photography, okay? So people were shooting still photography and that was square basically, slightly rectangular, but mostly square. And so that's why they decided to do what they did. They could have made formats that were wider ASIC ratio, but they really didn't. And it wasn't until later in time that those tests that happened a long time ago with widescreen actually came to be. And we ended up with widescreen formats like 70 millimeter that we have today. And so um, those formats are pretty much square. Now, um, there are some formats that are a little bit wider than square. IMAX is 1.44 to one. So that's a little bit more rectangular. And of course, um, you have the 70 millimeter format, five per 70 millimeter, which is 2.20 to one aspect ratio, which is widely used on current motion pictures such as Christopher Nolan's Tenant and Dunkirk. And then you have the six per format, which is actually taller than it is wide. That's because the Cinerama format had three strips playing at once, all in tandem to get a 2.75 to one aspect ratio image. So how do you get widescreen images onto a standard four by three format? That was basically the task in the late 40s, early 50s, when the television world came to be and people were sitting at home watching TV and not going to the movie theaters as much. And so the movie industry had to do something to figure out a way of drawing people back. So widescreen formats kind of came back.
So even though there were some cool widescreen formats, you know, pre-World War II, a lot of them were being rediscovered and being used in the commercial industry post-World War II to retain people in cinema. And one of those formats, which was most popular, was called CinemaScope. Now, CinemaScope is a anamorphic system, meaning that it takes a 2.40 to 1 aspect ratio image and squeezes it into a frame that is pretty much 4 by 3. It's not quite, it's a little bit narrower than that, but it's, it's close enough for government work. And that 4 by 3 frame, when expanded, would give you a widescreen 2.40 to 1 image, which is quite amazing. Of course, at the time they had 70 millimeter formats, which are 2.20 to 1 aspect ratio. However, 70 millimeter is very expensive to shoot and project. So for lower cost movies that wanted to have a big screen, they needed to shoot on a different format. And so the um, Cinerama format and the 5 perf format uh, were the kind of high end way of doing things. And then for the low end movies, they would shoot on 35 millimeter anamorphic and then de squeeze in the theater. And then over time, it became kind of the de facto format. Another thing that was very popular at the time was again VistaVision. And they would shoot VistaVision, which was again horizontal 35 millimeter, exactly the same as 35 millimeter still cameras with eight perforations between each frame. So a very, very large image with a 1.55 to 1 aspect ratio. And they would blow that up to 70 millimeter for projection. Okay, and they wouldn't crop the top and the bottom. They would literally just have black bars on the side and it would be like a one-to-one onto five per centimeter millimeter for projection. And it was a great way to deal with it because this division shot 35 millimeter, so the stock was a lot cheaper. And it was really easy to cut that negative and then blow it up to five per 70 for distribution purposes. The other thing about five per 70 millimeter is that you could have a six track magnetic sound system on the film which meant that that would give you extremely high quality audio. And that audio drew people back to the theater as well. It wasn't just a single mono soundtrack like what, what most movies were projecting at the time. Now, over the years, things changed and Fox developed their own format, which actually has a couple of tangents. One of them is 55 millimeter for um, capturing with a camera. And then they would take the 55 millimeter material and blow it up to 70 millimeter. But the other format was, of course, their own 35 millimeter format, which is this Fox CinemaScope format. And the CinemaScope format is really cool because it has a four track um, stereo system for audio. Uh, and I say stereo because it was really early surround sound and they didn't really know what to call it. And so I still call it stereo. And um, it has a bigger image than our standard four per 35 millimeter because the soundtrack area is so much smaller. It's still 35 millimeters wide, but because the perforations are smaller, they have more room for not just image, but also soundtrack. It's a very, very clever format. It's really a shame it kind of came and went away. But it's worth noting because it was used quite heavily, and the four-track mag system was developed for standard 35 millimeter eventually. And sometimes people play those prints. It's rare, but you can still see them every once in a while. But the main audio formats that were used at the time were optical soundtracks, and there were actually three different types, variable density, bilateral variable area, and unilateral variable area. Today, we still use the bilateral variable area because it creates the highest quality sound in the narrowest amount of space. I'm not in the mood for anything as far as you're concerned except an explanation. Well, of course, dear, of what? Last night. Where were you until three o'clock? That emergency committee. Well, I've never heard it called that before. The eight millimeter format had an optical audio available for it. Now, of course, it used a little bit of picture space, but it was pretty bad. Very, very narrow audio tracks. Super 8 had both uh, a double magnetic stripe and had the option of doing optical audio, which is quite interesting. The 9.5 millimeter format was, again, optical audio down the side. Standard 16 millimeter had basically a very simple optical or magnetic audio. And you see a lot of cameras that had magnetic audio built in and they would, um, you know, go ahead and record in camera audio, very similar to the optical audio recording cameras at the time as well. And so you do see camera stuff being magnetic, but not prints. 16 millimeter prints are almost entirely optical. Super 16, no room for a soundtrack, however, there is enough room on the side here to do something and no one's done it. And I wish somebody would because it'd be really cool. 
Um, obviously, camera negative doesn't have any audio on it, so we're gonna bypass that. The Fox format, 30 millimeter format, four stripe um, magnetic audio. Standard 35 millimeter has a lot of cool things because remember the 35 millimeter format that we know today for Perf 35 has been developed over the years. So even though it started with just optical soundtrack, believe it or not, it actually has three different digital soundtracks on it. Um, the first format was actually Dolby Digital, which came out in about 1991. And it puts digital audio between the sprocket holes on one side. And if you look really closely, you can see the double D the digital for Dolby Digital logo right in the middle of every single area between the perforations. Uh, Dolby Digital has some weak points. Um, it's kind of low bit rate. It's 5.1. Um, but it works pretty good. And to this day, it's kind of the de facto standard for 35 millimeter prints. You also have these green lines down the sides. That is Sony Dynamic Digital Sound or SDDS. Uh, works basically the same as uh, CD does. So it actually has a parity track as well. So it'll read data through a laser, uh, little pits and divots, just like a CD. And it takes those pits and divots and it basically creates a parity layer layer as well so that if it has any any issues with reading certain parts of it it has a backup for those parts uh within the media so it's very complicated um it's pcm i don't know the bit rate off the top of my head but it's very very high quality it's eight channels and it works a lot better than dolby digital actually it's a very very good format it's a shame that sony discontinued it because in my opinion it was probably the best on film digital audio format and then you've got optical audio of course our stereo tracks wavy lines and then next to that you have little dots and dashes and those are time code for dts or digital theater systems um, dts is the best soundtrack system for motion picture film it's widely used on 70 millimeters as well using the same dts track on the side of the film and um it's really really good and it uses cds to play back the audio or nowadays is actually a little uh, compact flash disc they can use um, that does the same thing so that they don't have to print CDs anymore for modern releases. But um, very, very good format. Six channels, very similar to, to Dolby Digital at 24 bit, 192 kilohertz, I believe. And so DTS far performs the other sound on film formats because it's not really on the film. Now with IMAX, the way they do audio is really kind of basic and simple, which is that they align the first frame in the projector and then the audio playback and the projector stay in sync for the whole show. And so they can change their audio format all they want. There's no time code on film. There's nothing on film that syncs them together. It just knows. And because unlike 35 millimeter where you can add and subtract splices, you know, because you're building a reel and you might miss a frame with um, the IMAX format, you can't really do that. You know, if you, if you have a problem with your IMAX print, you're going to have to replace those frames or it'll fall out of sync, you know? And a lot of modern IMAX prints are built somewhere else and then shipped in pre-built as well. Not all, of course, but quite a bit are. Um, and then, of course, with our good old Cinerama, the audio is separate on a six-track magnetic roll of film that runs at the same exact speed as the projectors do. So um, it's a really cool audio format as well. It actually sounds really good for something that came out in the late 50s. It's pretty amazing. So that's how the audio formats work. Of these formats here, there are only two formats that haven't been used in recent years. And that is, of course, 9.5 millimeter, which died out in the 60s. And we have a whole video about that. It's really great. I hope you guys watch it. And then we have uh, the Fox uh, format, which also died off as well. Um, believe it or not, there has been a recent movie shot with Cinerama. So Cinerama is not quite a dead format. And they still restore movies and project them at certain theaters that can project full um, three projector Cinerama formats. Um, so that's kind of still around, kind of. Obviously, no one's going to shoot with it for a real movie, but for fun, people have done some stuff on it. And so it's not quite dead, dead, right? Whereas in 9.5 and the Fox format are dead. No one plays with them. No one talks about them. They're dead formats. 8 millimeters, kind of still around. You can kind of still get, um, you know, reperforationed stock from standard new 16 millimeter stock. And people will still split them in half for you and process it and everything like that and put it on reels. So you can still kind of shoot 8mm. Kind of. Barely. Super 8, still around. We all know that. Um, 9.5 is dead. 
Uh, standard 16 millimeter, absolutely. Two perf is kind of hard to get. Again, people kind of custom perforate it. So if you have a two perf uh, or dual perf 16 camera, my suggestion is probably that you need to get some special film for it to shoot with it because even though they do make it, it's very rare. Kodak does very, very small batches every once in a while, but you have to order a lot of it to get them to make it. So um, double perf kind of exists, but kind of doesn't exist, but is, is possible. Of course, the 16 millimeter format with optical still exists, right? We can still make prints today. Super 16 is very widely used. Three perf 35 millimeter, very widely used. Our Fox format's dead. Four perf 35 millimeter, very widely used, of course. And of course, five perf 70 millimeter is also very widely used. Now, IMAX, interestingly enough, is dying very fast. We have a whole video about IMAX and how they uh, basically dumped their whole concept of a very large film format as being the way they were going to stay afloat and decided to move to digital uh, a couple of years ago. I think they started in like 2015 or so. And now they're finally with full transition. And unfortunately, seeing a movie shot on IMAX, real film IMAX, and projected on real film IMAX is very, very difficult. And unfortunately, COVID has made things even worse and more difficult. And I think post-COVID, we're going to see very few theaters being able to project IMAX because theaters have closed since COVID started. And a lot of those theaters that closed were ones that had film projectors. So I don't expect us to see very many more IMAX films shot and released, which is a real shame. Tenant may be the last one. We never know. So that's kind of our film format roundup. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've enjoyed making this little demo here. And I think it's a lot of fun to talk about the film formats. And there are so many other formats out there that you should learn about and read about because this is just a little scratch at what's available. And I think that if you're interested in this, you should definitely go to Wikipedia, definitely look up different film formats. They got a great list online. You can see them. You can um, you know, click on links that, that guide you to where they started from. Um, there are some neat formats, but these are kind of the ones that survived the format war. You know, These are the ones that um, made it out on top. And even though, again, some of them we don't use anymore, it's in recent years we've stopped using. Not in the last 50 years, but in the last like 20 or 30 years, you know? So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.